Hello mate and welcome to a, an exciting episode of uh, Introduction to Maya series that we're going to be doing gradually over the next series of weeks. And in this video the first thing that I want to do is just talk about low poly mesh modeling. And low poly mesh modeling is a really good way of practicing using any 3D piece of software. And remember that the principles of 3D modeling don't change from one piece of software to another. So if you're using Blender or you're using uh, 3ds max or any of the other apps that are out there a lot of the stuff that we talk about in this series is going to be relevant regardless of that maya has a very specific tool set that enables you to do certain things that you can't do in other pieces of software but the most of the majority of the time you're not going to be using those tools you're going to be using the basics such as the extrude and the bevel tools which are the same no matter what piece of software that you're using in principle so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm actually going to just render or rather create a low poly tree and it's a fairly simple process but it's worth practicing doing over and over again because a you'll build up a library of lots of different types of tree but you'll also master the art of creating low poly meshes using some really basic tools that are available. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a cylinder I click on that and a cylinder appears in my scene and then if I press the T button what should happen is a dialog will pop up which allows me to change some properties. Now at the moment the radius of my cylinder is one meter or one unit and I don't want it to be that I want it to be more like 0.2 it's going to be a fairly narrow tree and also you can see the height is currently one so there's not necessarily a problem with that, but what I want to do is I'm actually going to drop it down to uh, 0.5 there. No, that's 5. I want 0.5. Thank you. And then you can see subdivisions is way too many. What I want is I want about five subdivisions. And now you can see that we're getting a nice low poly shape. And this is really the kind of basis of low poly rendering, low poly building is that you want you to keep your subdivisions to as low as possible to make sure that when you're actually editing your mesh you haven't got to mess around with thousands and thousands of vertices you've only got to work with the minimum number of polygons and vertices that you can use right so I'm quite happy with that so what I'm going to do now is open the attribute editor I'm going to click on the poly cylinder tab the shape that we've just created and because I know that it is 0.5 in height and that it is currently straddling the x y z axis zero 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 what i need to do is translate it on the y axis by 0.25 and that will make it sit perfectly upon the ground later on what i will do is i will change the uh, pivot point of this shape so that it is down at the bottom because when we import this mesh into a game engine or a piece of rendering software we want the zero zero coordinate of our shape to be smack bang in the middle of the bottom of the shape so that we can level it or line it with the terrain or whatever we're putting it on properly but for now we're just going to leave it like that so currently we're in object mode what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in a little bit press space that'll bring up my four view tab and i'm going to go into my side view like this and we can see our shape there nicely aligned on the zero axis like so now i'm going to go to create and I'm going to go to curve tools and I'm actually going to create a CV curve tool. And what that allows me to do is if I were to start around about here and I can just create a curve. That's probably a bit too wobbly, but we'll 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 stick with it for now. And then I'm just going to come off to the side like that. And then I'm going to hit enter. And now we have a nice curve there. It looks like kind of at the moment it looks kind of like a weird thin plant growing out of a plant pot, doesn't it? But we're going to hit space again come back to our perspective view I'm going to hover over my shape and I'm going to make sure that I'm in object mode so that I can select this object and then I'm going to go into face mode and I'm going to select holding down the shift key these five faces and then I'm going to select my curve making sure that I can do that now if I can't I have to come out come back to object mode make sure that I have my object selected because sometimes it gets a little bit glitchy there we go select that and now I can select my curve like so now that i've got all those things selected making sure that i've chose the faces first then the curve i'm not going to press Control e which is my extrude tool and lo and behold you can see that it has extruded a face which goes straight to the end of my curve 
Now, I'm going to drag up the divisions, and what you can see is that actually the more divisions I create, the more my extrusion matches the shape or the, the curve that I've created, which is really handy. So jumping back to the beginning of the process, what we've got here is our five faces selected and our curve. And press Ctrl and E on that to make sure that we get an extrusion. And then we can increase the number of divisions by however many we want. Now, there's currently a property hidden which we need. So what we need to do is click on this little menu here, this little burger menu in the top right hand corner. And we actually need to turn on taper like so. And now what we can do is we can actually reduce the size over the course of our extrusion to be thinner and now you can see that it's starting to look a bit more like a twig isn't it so there we go I've, I've, I'm pretty happy with that taper so I'm going to hit enter there and I'm going to come out of there I'm going to make sure that I'm back into object mode and you can see that we currently have a weird looking spooky tree what we also currently have at the moment is this curve and we need to get rid of that otherwise we're just going to end up with a whole mishmash of stuff in our scene that we don't need so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Modify, I'm going to go to Freeze Transformations, and then I'm going to go to Edit, Delete All by Type, History. Now I can remove our curve from the scene and it will have no impact on our tree whatsoever because the extrusion is no longer mapped to the curve. What you're thinking is this kind of looks weird, what the hell? And I completely agree with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my Rotate tool and I'm actually going to rotate our tree by a small amount there and then yeah I'm pretty happy with that pretty happy with that we've gone almost 45 degrees like so now what we need to do is we need to come into our face mode again and we're going to pick a place that we want a branch to come out of now to me there is a bit of a weird bend here which we're going to work on in a little while but what I want to do is focus on bringing out another branch here currently there's no real easy way to create a offshoot here. There are many ways that we can split and create new faces here, but I'm just gonna use the tried and tested knife tool. I'm gonna to hold control, and I'm actually gonna just create a break there, and I'm gonna create a break there, and then that gives us something to work with. Nothing too stressful there, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my, I'm gonna press W, or click on the move tool icon just to get rid of the knife tool, and um, I'm going to select holding the shift key, these four faces. Nice and simple. Then I'm gonna come up to edit mesh and I'm gonna hit circularize. And what that has done is it's given us a flat surface to work with. Now, it is a bit weird, I will grant you that. So what we need to do is I think we need to hit the scale option and just drop that down slightly so it doesn't look quite so strange. And that'll work. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control and E once and I'm just going to drag it a smidgen out like that just so that we've got something to work with because now I can rotate this face by using my E option and I can just rotate it so that it actually pokes out at an angle that I'm probably going to want the brush to come off of like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my side view and I'm going to create another CV curve. So curve tools, CV curve, and you can see where my branch starts. And I'm actually just gonna come out like that with this one, hit enter, and now I've got my curve. And now we're gonna repeat the process that we followed earlier, come into object mode, make sure we have our main tree selected, come into face mode, select my four faces, pressing W to make sure that I don't accidentally rotate my face. Choose all of those things. Zoom out so that I can see what's happening. Press Control and E. And then it's the same process again. We can increase the number of divisions. I'm just gonna go with maybe six this time. That doesn't look too bad. And then we can drag our taper down. Or we can just input a value. I'm gonna go with 0.2 again. And then we've got another branch for our tree. Now what I would recommend doing is doing this multiple times, adding branches, coming out of branches, and you can build up a really sort of complex looking tree, and making sure that you keep an eye on these joints because it is a low poly model and there are going to be some adjustments that you need to make. For example, this just kind of looks a bit weird at the moment, so I'm probably gonna drag this vertex back so we can just come with that, select that vertex, make sure that we're in move mode, and then I can bring that back here 
and I can play around with this join here to make it look a little bit more natural just by dragging the vertices around and just even dragging lines and faces in if you want to just select an edge go into edge mode bring that in you don't want it to look too unnatural but at the same time it is a low poly mesh so there is going to be a certain amount of um, weirdness going on because low poly is obviously a very very sort of um, very weak uh, approximation of the object that you're copying and essentially what you have to remember the main things that you have to remember when you're doing this is to remember to go to modify freeze transformations modify delete all by type history so that you can get rid of those extra curves that are loitering around in your scene and as you can see when you have object mode deselected it actually doesn't look too bad realistically you can always thin out the this vertex this vertex here we can go to a vertex mode we can drag that one out just to kind of give us that little bit more of a natural join between the branch and the tree this one kind of pokes out at a weird angle so we'll just bring that in slightly as does this one bring that in slightly and just making that join look more natural and essentially just repeat that process over and over and over again until you have a really cool looking tree um, when we add leaves, but rem remembering that this is a low poly mesh, we'll probably go through that in another video because that is another bit of fun that we can have. But essentially that's it really guys, it's a really simple thing to do, modeling a low poly tree or any low poly mesh, it's just a case of coming up with a close approximation to the object that you're trying to mimic in as many as few polygons as possible. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.